guys welcome back to the channel today we are gonna see unit 7 that is high risk pregnancy assessment and management what are the risk things related to the pregnancies how we are gonna assess them how we, how we are gonna find them and how we can manage them from this chapter you will get 7 marks totally that is one question for 5 marks one question for 2 marks so totally 7 marks if you read this chapter, you are perfect with 7 marks. I would like to inform the first topic is screening and assessment, which I have been already finished in the previous chapter. That is non-invasive and invasive test. If you want this in detail, you can go and watch my unit third part M N O in detail if you need. I'll give just a short description, very short description now. If you want really a deep one, you can go and watch there. Now first, NST. That is non-stress test. This examination is performed to see the fetus heart rate. And by the name itself, you get to know non-stress. In the sense, we will never give any impulse or any pressure from outside. We will wait till the baby reacts and see how the heartbeat of the baby is present in the inside the womb. Next is CST. This is contraction stress test. In this, we will provide contraction. We will provide impulse on the mother's womb. And we will see how the baby is reacting, how the baby's heart rate is increasing. And next is USG, ultrasound soundgraphy or ultrasonography. In this, we will see any defect is present in the baby whether the baby is growing well or not is there any problem is baby suffocated is baby is any um, different position not in the uh, proper position is there is any mal positions we will come to know here this three examination is very important apart from this i'll give you test names which will be useful in the examination purpose okay fetal biophysical profile modified biophysical profile fetal movement count umbilical blood sampling at the time of pregnancy there is one condition which is seen very frequently in the pregnant woman that is hyper MSS gravidarum hyper means more MSS means vomiting gravidarum means during pregnancy so during the pregnancy the vomiting sensation is seen but there are many women who undergoes excessive vomiting because of this excessive vomiting there will be weight loss which is clearly visible and because of this there will be water imbalance that is electrolyte discharge imbalance and even ketourea the cause for this is hormonal change and psychogenic change hormonal change is because at the time of pregnancy, estrogen and the progesterone level, estrogen and progesterone level will be increasing vigorously. Because of this hormones, vomiting sensation is seen. And if you see the psychogenic is nothing but because of the anxiety in the patient, the vomiting sensation is seen. And apart from this, there are few minor reasons also because of allergic re reactions and because of some kind of food items the patient feels vomiting sign and symptoms of hyper MSS gravidarum definitely vomiting but apart from this we have dehydration the eyes gets inside that is sunken eyes tongue becomes dry dry tongue hypotension because of excessive discharge of electrolytes the BP gets low and if this condition lasts it may lead to jaundice also how this is investigated by the regular routine checkup? Do remember at the time of investigation, first we will take the patient's previous history, physical examination. This will be performed. Apart from this, you need to even note down that also. Apart from this, we will do blood examination, urine analysis, liver dysfunctioning test. Circulatory changes, that is vital signs, if we check, we will get to know those changes. Mainly ECG and USG is performed. Management of hyper-MSS gravidum. These are the three principles and 
this three principles are not only for this condition you can use this principle for any conditions for example you are here to control the vomit okay that is hyper MSS gravidum we will control it in two ways one with the use of medicine and one with the use of diet and all that is non pharmacological method one is pharmacological method apart from controlling the main thing we will even see the symptoms to control like because of vomiting we have dehydration electrolytic imbalance we will even try to control those things also after controlling this we will try to reduce the danger complications in leading further there may be many danger complications so we need to control it as soon as possible this is what we will do in management of any kind of disease first we will control the actual disease next we will control the side effects or symptoms which is related by the disease and we will try to reduce the danger complications related to the disease. Pharmacological methods. Generally, we use ondasterone to stop the vomiting sensation. Apart from this, we have other two tools. Those are phenothysin and metaclocomoid. This both also helps to stop the vomit immediately. If the diet pattern doesn't work, we furtherly provide those medicines. With vomiting, you can commonly see dehydration. They both are very best friends. Starting with IV fluids and multivitamin tablets, even if in this condition the patient is not regaining, the patient is very dehydrated, then we will provide diamond hydrinate. This is of 50 mg and we will provide this dosage based on the doctor's prescription. It's nursing care. Now, the main thing is you have to advise the patient to make sure to take care of his oral health. Because of excessive vomiting, there is a chance that teeth might get decayed. And uh, yeah, this is very important, your thing. You need to maintain an hyper -emesis chart, like at what time the patient is vomiting. Is there any particular time? Like after having the food, the patient is vomiting within half an hour. Or after having the food, the patient is vomiting immediately. Like that you need to maintain and very main thing is you have to maintain the characteristics of the vomiting that is very important to detect which type of vomiting is occurring in the patient to provide the treatment it will be very useful and regular vital signs is definitely should be maintained and intake and outtake to maintain the hydration level you should maintain it and rest everything is the common one that you need to maintain these are the nursing care that is provided to the hyperemesis gravidarum now the very important topic in this chapter that is abortion abortion you might be heard but uh, do know the definition that is nothing but the premature expulsion of the conception that is before the baby grows fully in the premature stage itself in the conception stage that is the, during the pregnancy the before growing properly the baby will be expelled from the uterus that is abortion and this abortion has various types now we are going to see that this is very important and one thing abortion can be seen within 28 weeks of the pregnancy when the conception starts this abortion occurs within 28 weeks okay so abortion can be two types one is spontaneous and one is induced spontaneous is the natural way induced is the man-made way like we are willing to get abortion so I'm going undergoing that is induced spontaneous is occurring naturally this induced have legal and illegal the very important thing is spontaneous in spontaneous you can see there is two types isolated and recurrent isolated is this is the first time this type of abortion is occurring in the patient recurrent is this is the second or third time the same type of abortion is occurring in the patient like Previously, I was got pregnant and I have got abortion the same type. Again, I'm pregnant. I'm getting the same type of abortion. That is recurrent. Okay. This isolated and recurrent has six types. And the first four types has very important. This last two types are uh, etiology of abortion. One is fetal factor. Other is maternal factor. In fetal factor, if you see, there are two causes. One is abnormal growth and chromosomal defect. If the baby is not growing well, then automatically it leads to abortion. If there is any defect, then still it leads to abortion. 
the main cause is maternal cause here this is very 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 important generally the abortion is due to infection to make sure there is no any infection we will do a test called torch test this is the torch test and uh, the torch test full form is toxoplasma gondii cytomegalovirus herpes virus rubella virus this is the full form of this torch test this is performed to make sure there is no any kind of infection present in the mother and the other reason is endocrine disorder if the mother is having any kind of endocrine disorders a hormonal disorder like uh, thyroid or uh, any kind of uh, cystic ovarian cystics like that it will lead to abortion automatically if there is any drug use drug use in the sense if mother is addicted to alcohol tobacco or any other unhealthy lifestyle then definitely the baby will not grow healthy it will lead to abortion next medication any unprescribed medications or any overdose of medications will lead to abortions and autoimmune disorders mainly aids if in many cases even at the time of aids the baby is born but in probably in many cases there is no growth of baby leading to abortion the first is thread end abortion in a simple word abortion has started but still there is a possible that if we take care of the baby the abortion will get stopped there is it doesn't lead to abortion this kind of abortion is known as thread end abortion in general in this condition the abortion occurs due to the delay of the care they will not know the seriousness of this they think it's just normal bleeding and they just leave it and that leads to abortion that is how this thread and abortion occurs here the main symptom is pain this pain is generally in the pelvic and the abdomen region heavy pain and bleeding that leads to dehydration hypotension fatigue decrease in glucose level dry tongue sunken eyes and many more the main symptoms is bleeding and the pain this too is constant in whole abortion process and what are the investigation since there is heavy bleeding we will do check hb estimation blood group to make sure if there is very uh, lot of blood is lost then we need to provide them blood so we will make sure blood group is detected urine analysis and ultrasound to make sure everything is removed in the process of abortion next treatment is given mild sedative and tocolytic drug is provided iv fluid to make sure there is no dehydration and further thing the main medication or the treatment that provided here is bed rest this is the main one we will advise the patient to take bed rest till the bleeding stops it's generally recommended for a week to 10 days within that the bleeding stops and good diet helps to regain the loss this is thread end abortion in evictable abortion in this the abortion process started but there is no chance of recovery that is in evictable abortion in this abortion you can see there will be lots of vaginal bleeding generally everything this bleeding and pain is common okay this bleeding and pain is common you can see here the dilation that is the fetal itself will try to come out fetal in the sense the fetus is not grown properly but the product inside the womb is will make a progress to come out that is there will be a dilation can be seen here what are the investigation generally in whole abortion process the investigation is very simple we have to find the hb count blood group pain level will be assisted to provide pain killers urine analysis will be assisted ultrasound will be done i didn't mention here but generally you can have it next treatment we have iv fluid blood transfusion and this one is extra here that is oxytocin drip of 10 unit in 5 percentage of destros this is because there is fetus is trying to come out so when we provide this this will make the process easier the fetus itself will come out for the ejection purpose we provide this medication and for this the main nursing care that we need to provide is psychological support and explain the process what's going on and provide the treatment
this itself not you can add more than 15 points to this process next we have incomplete abortion in the sense the product inside the uterus is not came outside fully there is something left behind inside the uterus that is incomplete the abortion is performed but not fully the product is removed and here if you see there will be excess the bleeding is the only reason that leads to this incomplete because of excessive bleeding we can't see whether the full product is came or not we will not be able to remove the product hp count definitely will be counted here and even you can see the pain level as usual ultrasound everything will be performed ultrasound is performed to make sure whether the full product is removed or not okay here in this condition there is an extra treatment that is provided for hypovolemia because of this excessive blood loss hypovolemia is a common one this might occur we need to provide treatment for this uh, related medications prescribed by doctor should be provided sedatives to reduce the pain and uh, iv fluids to maintain the level of energy and uh, comparatively in all the abortion process this abortion process requires more time longer time so care is also should be provided based on that mainly pain is the main source here so we need to provide the care for the pain complete abortion complete abortion in the sense abortion has occurred and we have removed everything very simple process in this process the uterus opening also will be very small bleeding will be very less so the treatment is not very major routine checkup with that ultrasound to make sure there is nothing left out that's it iv fluid and painkiller will be provided just complete rest is enough with good diet and good support this patient will get recovered this is all about abortion Abortion is not just based on the process, even based on the site, the abortion occurs or abortion made, man-made, that is, these are the things, ovarian pregnancy, abdominal pregnancy, tubal pregnancy or ectopic pregnancy, again, pregnancy in rudimentary uterine horn, that is, see, if a woman is pregnant, the egg should come and get attached in this uterus region that is the normal pregnancy and that is how the pregnancy should occur this will lead to the good growth but when the egg is coming from this ovary this is ovary okay from this ovary if this egg is traveling sometimes in some cases the ovary will get attached here itself and start to grow here this is ovarian pregnancy or sometimes it goes this way this in this tube fallopian tube in that region this fallopian tube in this region the egg starts to sit here and get deposit there and starts to grow it there itself can a fallopian tube get expanded as the uterus can expand that's not possible so this is a false pregnancy that is tubal pregnancy is uh, ectopic pregnancy at these conditions also we legally perform the abortion process and abdominal pregnancies and other regions based on the site also the abortion is performed apart from this uterus site if the egg goes and deposit somewhere like in the fallopian tube or near the ovary then we legally perform the abortion APH this is one of the main disorder that is seen in pregnancy that is antipartum hemorrhage anti in the sense before partum pregnancy hemorrhage in the sense bleeding and blood clots both considered to be in this a bleeding occurs from the vaginal area that is from genital area bleeding occurs that too before 28 weeks of the pregnancy in the middle of the pregnancy if there is a bleeding is occurring if a bleeding is observed that is considered aph in that we have various types and these two are the main type in that that is placenta abruction placenta previa because of these two conditions bleeding generally occurs and that is known as APH first what is placenta abruption when a baby is formed 
so baby starts to grow like this in, this is the uterus and in this uterus we have a placenta here an umbilical cord and a baby here like that baby grows okay this is placenta when the baby is growing in this placenta will get disattached with get separate and fall off that is placenta abruption if it's this getting disattached then automatically there will be a tear of tissue then there is bleeding occurred this is placenta abruption now placenta previa placenta previa in the sense this is uterus okay this is uterus in this uterus placenta should be up here but in some cases this is opening vaginal opening okay in some cases this placenta will be in this opening area i will provide an image like that if you see the placenta is present is it is blocking the way of the birth, birth canal this is placenta previa placenta abruption is nothing but separation okay of the placenta so what are the reasons why it might occur in the pregnant women because of some kind of medicine uses drugs overuses or if the mother is alcoholic if she is smoking in that conditions also or if she is having any underlying diseases like this conditions underlying conditions like hypertension and sugar if she is using drugs if she has any trauma in the sense uh, if she underwent any kind of accident or any kind of problem in her then automatically placenta abruption the disattachment of placenta occurs and the main main thing is this one multi paternity means two babies or three babies within the placenta sorry within the uterus if you see if there is two baby two baby then placenta can't withhold the weight of two babies so if it is can't withholding the weight then automatically it fall off because of multi paternity placenta abruption occurs and the main symptoms that can be seen here is painful vaginal bleeding as soon as the placenta is getting disattached there will be heavy pain and heavy bleeding will be caused then automatically patient comes to hospital there will be contraction in the uterus will be seen apart from this there is a chance that patient might go unconscious the heart rate will be increased vital signs will get fluctuated this all seen in the patient and what is the diagnosis that is done here is do note few more points in the diagnosis every time we do take patient's history previous history everything general checkups vital signs you have to write it on your own apart from this anything specially will be mentioned here okay the main thing what we do is ultrasound clinical suspicion is nothing but your own that the physical examination will be performed you ultrasound will be performed here to see what the condition inside it is in this condition the birth canal will be blocked by the placenta inside the uterus that's the condition the cause for this is previous c section in the previous delivery if the patient was undergone the c section then automatically this time there is a multiple chance for placenta previa apart from this multiple gestation that is uh, more than 2 3 third pregnancies like that the main risk factor in the placenta previa is the advanced maternal age that is the mother age is more than 35 or around 35 in this condition placenta previa is commonly seen the symptom for this is painless since there is no tear so no need to worry there is no pain but the bleeding will be excessive and it is in bright red color the diagnosis that is what is the examination that is performed is transvaginal ultra ultrasound in this this placenta previa has various sites in it that is uh, partially blocking fully blocking like that to see at which way the placenta is blocking we do transvaginal ultrasound types of placenta previa we have marginal partial and total if you see in marginal way the placenta will be situated in the margin it's not even blocking the way but still it's a placenta previa because on further going on it will block the way and partial is if you see here 
the hole is partially blocked that's why it's partial placenta previa and here the placenta has totally blocked the way this is total if you see this is the three degree that is seen in placenta previa in placenta abraxia we have just three types which is mild moderate and severe mild is the placenta will be little bit uh, uh, separated from the uterus in moderate little more in severe almost whole placenta has been separated from the uterus mild moderate and severe are the three degrees that is seen in placenta abraxia and in placenta previa we have three degrees that is marginal partial and total the management for placenta abraxian and placenta previa both are almost the same that is leading to c-section delivery we will wait we will support the fetus growth and after few weeks we will perform c-section delivery for the management section you can add up what are the c-section care provided that comes under this management apart from this we can give up uh, common management those are for bleeding we provide uh, blood transfusion vitamin tablets iron tablets next we provide uh, painkillers like sedative ones and fluids pregnancy with anemia in the pregnancy period the woman sends the blood to the baby since she is sending the blood the blood amount in her body which is produced should be more than the normal but in some women the blood is not enough and that leads to anemic condition this can be in any form come let's see its classification it can be normal physiological or pathological form of anemic condition or else because of any deficiency also this anemic can occur like if she has any iron deficiency then it is iron deficiency anemic follicle deficiency vitamin b12 deficiency protein deficiency because of any deficiencies anemic can occur apart from this if there is any bleeding based on that condition if there is little bleeding then that can be acute anemic condition if she had any accident or any kind of injury and there is lot of blood has been lost from her then it can be a chronic anemic condition apart from it if she has any underlined disease and because of that her body is losing blood that also comes here the management of anemic condition starts with oral route and tablet will be prescribed ferrous tablet will be prescribed if the patient has any problem of consuming the tablet like she has a problem in observation her cells are weak in observing mal observation is seen or if the anemic is very severe that oral therapy cannot uh, go with it then we will go with injections that is im root and iv root in the injection if you see we had two options imperon jectofer this too before providing we will give a test dose of 1 ml if there is any kind of reactions we will stop it immediately and we will go with alternate sources if not then we will go with it apart from it if the condition is very very severe then we will go with blood transfusion also this are the management of anemic condition but the main thing is in the nursing care we will advise the patient to follow a good diet and this advice is provided from the beginning of the pregnancy itself a good diet with lots of green leaves iron follicle foods everything should be consumed good exercise also helps to maintain the good blood rate and uh, drinking plenty amount of water helps to clean purify the blood eating good fruits and vegetables and avoiding junk foods uh, avoiding beverages if she is exposed to the smoking environment even that may affect the production of blood in her body so saying her to stay in a safe environment like that here the main thing is you have to provide a good nursing care lots of infections which affects the pregnancy and lead to abortion to avoid that there are lots of precautionary measure which are taken in the form of monthly checkups if you see a pregnant woman will go for hospital regularly for routine checkups in this checkups we will make sure the 
baby is healthy it is growing in a healthy way there is no any complications that affects the pregnancy in that one thing infection is very important infection can be seen in a pregnancy in three ways first inside the uterus in the form of intrauterine fetal damage and it is also known as congenital infection and next in neonatal period that is prenatal infection or sexually transmitted disease and the infection anything can be transmitted to the fetus from the mother activities these are the three ways in which a uh, pregnancy can be affected in the form of infection in this three classifications of infection sexually transmitted infection is very important come let's know what is pregnancy with aids aids is caused by an hiv virus that is human immunodeficiency virus and how it is caused there are various way if you share the needle with the hiv patient like if you use the needle used by the hiv patient you will get aids any blood transfusion from the hiv patient having multiple sex partners and uh, from a mother to baby in the form of placental blood the hiv can be transmitted we need to stop hiv in these many ways in a person it can be seen in four stages at very beginning an acute infection can be seen and after that infection is present but it is asymptomatic in the sense any symptoms related to hiv cannot be detected and then this hiv attacks a particular region and next bit this hiv gets a partner of underlying disease like any neurological disease or any secondary infections any kind of partner disease will be found the diagnosis of hiv is generally done in elsa test apart from this there are two other ways in which hiv can be found one is viral culture and other is viral dna and rna pattern detecting method in this three test you can find the presence of hiv in a patient management of hiv infected pregnant women as soon as we get to know the mother has hiv if the baby is less than 22 week we will advise the mother to undergo abortion if she is not ready for that or the baby is more than 22 week then we will take few precautionary measures first we will perform a test called cd4 cell count cd4 cell count in this if the cell count is more than 500 then the baby is able to grow on its own it's growing well so normal regular obstetric care can be provided if the cd4 cell count is less than 500 then we will provide a therapy which is known as acetylthymidine which is of 100 mg 5 times a day prophylaxis for pneumocyst carney infection medications will be provided if the cd4 count is less than 200 these are the three things which is followed first if it is greater than 500 routine obstetrical care will be provided if it is less than 500 then acetylthymidine will be provided if it is less than 200 then prophylaxis for pneumocyst carney infection medications will be provided this is followed when the baby is inside the womb at the time of delivery we have few precautionary measures which has to be followed first is the personal safety is very important the person one who is performing the delivery that is the doctor and the staff nurses everybody should have a protective barrier with them that is wearing the sunglasses i mean wearing eye glasses gowns double glasses to protect themselves from this disease apart from this the handling of the instruments mainly needles and those blood samples amniotic fluid body samples everything will be infected so if your body tissue is exposed to to that blood molecules then you may get infected so you need to handle this in a very safety manner after the birth of the baby we need to sanitize the baby at that time we need to remove the secretion of nosopharyngeal and oropharyngeal and after the delivery we will make sure the mother is not feeding the baby through the breast milk the hiv get transmitted to the baby so breast milk and feeding the baby is completely no 
this is how the management of HIV is done. Hypertension in pregnancy or pregnancy induced hypertension. What is the normal BP count that is 120 by 80? More than this that is 140 by 90 mmHg is considered to be hypertension. This hypertension during pregnancy can be classified in various ways mainly based on the symptoms. For example, in first condition if you see pregnancy induced hypertension that is due to preeclampsia and eclampsia. Eclampsia is nothing but fits based on the episodes of fits it is classified and uh, preeclampsia is based on the proto-urea level it is classified. Next chronic hypertension this is directly based on vital signs that is the BP the blood pressure ranging from 140 by 90 and above that is chronic hypertension and if you see the third is uh, preeclampsia or eclampsia superimposed on chronic hypertension that is they will have preeclampsia or eclampsia with that chronic hypertension is also seen that is the BP level the vital signs will be more than this as well as there will be a frequency of uh, episodes of fits can be seen in the patient or uh, either proteoyuria can be seen in the patient. If not then we have another type which is known as transient hypertension that is after the delivery in the postpartum period within 10 or 12 days this BP will automatically disappear. And the last we have unclassified hypertension that is we do not know the reason of hypertension but it occurs. Pathoetiology of hypertension first these are few other risk factors if it is a first pregnancy or she has already a history of hypertension, diabetes, obesity, autoimmune disorder, age extreme that means the mother has age of around 35 or above, multiple gestation genetic factors any risk factor that is making the placental growth is poor or abnormal placenta then that will lead to hypertension let us see in detail this risk factors will affect the growth of cytotropoblastic layer and this is present in the placenta placenta connects mother and the baby they supply blood and uh, supports the growth of the baby the arteries of mothers which is connected to the placenta will be straight but because of this risk factors this arteries will get spiraled up will get like that you know it gets spiraled up since it's the way is not straight the blood supply will get reduced and that leads to placenta ischemia and at this condition because of not enough blood sent to the placenta the layer which is present in the uterus endothelium cell gets injured when there is no blood supply automatically the cell damage occurs if inside the womb there is a damage then the mother send its blood antibodies to cure it if you see here the mother's blood vascular level artery level blood supply everything will get increased if mother's bodies get to know that baby is not receiving enough amount of blood or baby is suffering then automatically mother's body reacts and sends the enough amount of blood enough amounts of antibodies the load in the mother body gets increased when there is heavy blood supply then the load on the renal system will also get increased but all of sudden if the load get increased the renal system can't function as fast as that can so it makes proteinuria to occur and this is how hypertension is increased when there is a heavy blood pressure when there is an uh, artery pressure increases when there is increased vascular then automatically hypertension occurs this is how hypertension occurs the diagnosis of hypertension is very simple that is the vital signs bp evaluation apart from this we will perform urine analysis and ask the details about the seizures episodes. It's because if you see in preeclampsia, we will come to know the proto-urian level is more, and uh, eclampsia is nothing but the episodes of seizures. 
So if we get to know about the details of this, we can classify the hypertension and provide treatment based on that. Management of hypertension. If you see more than hypertension, the seizure is given the priority. First, we need to prevent the seizures. And it is performed by providing the magnesium sulfate solution. See, this is provided in two ways. One is 2 grams in 8 ml. And other is 4 grams in 12 ml. We give it by diluting in the diluted water. And if you see for hypertension, we provide calcium channel blockers. At any condition, we don't provide ACE inhibitors and diuretics. ACE inhibitors and diuretics both are contraindicated for, be, for fetus. It leads to fetal damage. Next management is done during the delivery of the baby. If the mother has lots of frequency of getting the eclampsia, getting the seizures, then the delivery will be performed in the C-section or else we will try to perform it in the normal way. This is the management of hypertension. Gestational diabetes mellitus. During the pregnancy, there are lots of changes seen in the woman body like increase of hormone, decrease of hormone, placental growth, fetal growth, exchange of blood, antibiotics. So like that, there are lots of change seen in the women's body. In that time, there are lots of health issues that occurs in the female body. In that, diabetes mellitus is one among them. That is nothing but glucose intolerance. The capacity of women's body digesting the glucose will get reduced. Generally, in 10%, 3% of women get this diabetes mellitus. And after the delivery process, it will automatically disappear. But... After 10 or 15 years, in the gap of 10 or 15 years, there is a chance of reoccurrence of this gestational diabetes mellitus in the form of type 2 diabetes mellitus. That is, soon after the delivery, it will disappear. The glucose level will get normal. But after 10 or 15 years, there is an impact that it might come again in the form of type 2 diabetes mellitus. So, this has an effect on both mother and the fetus in various way. Firstly, there is a chance of preeclampsia to occur in the women and this chance is quite increased when the woman has diabetes mellitus. Not just preeclampsia, eclampsia is also seen seizures, chances is also increased. And infection, as you know, at the time of pregnancy and deliveries, infection is quite commonly seen and this chance is also quite increased. Mainly endometrium is the common condition seen in this and the chance of PPH is also increased. Now what is PPH? Postpartum hemorrhage. After the delivery, the bleeding which is seen that is postpartum hemorrhage. Because of this diabetes mellitus, the curing, the healing process will get reduced and uh, the tear which is a uh, tear or the womb which is occurred in the delivery process will not get closed fastly, will not get healed fastly because of the PPH is seen in the large number. And C-section cases is also increased because of this diabetes mellitus in the pregnant women. Apart from this, there are lots of other things too. Because of this diabetes mellitus, there are other health conditions will also be developing. For example, Hypertension, which is quite commonly seen. Hypertension, the chance of in developing the hypertension is also seen. And other health conditions like anemic condition in the women or any other hormonal imbalance conditions can be seen when the woman has diabetes mellitus. Diagnosis of diabetes mellitus that is done by FBS, fasting blood sugar or fasting blood glucose. Soon after waking up without consuming any glucose, we need to take the sample of our blood and perform the examination. If it is around 90 mg percentage, it's okay. If not, if it is more than that, then the person has diabetes mellitus. Apart from this, there are different tests too like RBS, random blood sugar or PPBS, 
this RBS and PPBS is performed after consuming the glucose. And at this time, the count can be around 120 mg percentage. But more than this is again a problem. More than this again indicates the person has diabetes mellitus. The management for these two conditions is based on the risk level. If the risk is very low, that is the count is around this, then the risk will be very low. It can be managed by the process of diet, that is non-pharmacological method is enough if the risk is very low. If the person has more risk, there is a problem in further it may affect the delivery process and all, then we use pharmacological methods. We provide insulin to the mother. Management during delivery is very important. We will wait till the delivery is happening on its own. If not, we will perform C-section. And one thing, during the delivery process, we will make sure the sugar level, that is the blood glucose level, should be around 80 to 100 mg. If not, for the maintenance purpose, we will provide the medicine. That is, for the 1 liter of 5% destroth, we will mix 10 U of soluble insulin we will already mix it and we will keep it already prepared and then we will keep on monitoring the blood glucose level if the rating is around 70 to 130 mg then we will provide 1 u per hour if it is 130 by 160 then we will provide 2 u per hour if it is 160 by 200 then the count we will provide 3 u per hour like that Based on the count of blood glucose level, we will provide the insulin. Pregnancy in RH negative women. See, blood has three things, mainly RBC, WBC and platelets. So, generally we can assume that blood has a property of protecting us from the antibodies. If mother has any problem, the baby in the womb send its cell to the mother and protects the mother from the illness. If baby has any problem, mother send its cells and antibodies to protect the baby from the illness or any damage or any infection. This function is performed in the pregnancy period, but it is only performed when they both share a similar kind of features, similar kind of system. If for example, mother has RH negative in the blood and fetus has RH positive, then automatically mother cell, the mother cells, the mother antibodies think the baby's antibodies are foreign particles like viruses or bacteria and mother itself start to kill her own fetus. See, when they both share different RH, then the mother antibodies thinks the fetus antibodies or fetus has an foreign particles and send its antibodies and hemoglobin that passes the placenta and reaches the baby and they start to kill the baby. Beginningly, it will come in the form of anemic, blood will be reduced, then heart functioning will be reduced then automatically edemus and in, inside the uterus itself the fetal will be dead. To find whether the mother and baby are sharing different RH or uh, to find whether the mother is killing her own child or not, we have a test called comb test that is indirect comb test. In our body, if we find any kind of foreign particles, then automatically our blood starts to produce large amount of antibodies and mainly in this condition RH isoimmunity will be produced in a large amount. By seeing that count we will get to know whether their system is okay with both or they are not okay with both. In management we will follow a process first. We will see whether father and mother are following which kind of RH. If for example mother has negative and father has negative then no need to worry. The chance of fetus having positive RH is very less. So we can follow normal pregnancy measures. If for example mother has negative RH and father has positive, then 
at the time of pregnancies the routine checkup will be going on monthly wise right at that time the screenings will be performed the first screening will be around 20 next 24th week next 28th week in every week the screening will be performed for example if the screening is coming negative then we will provide anti d immunoglobin injection which is of dose 300 mg while if it comes positive we will provide an injection to sensitize or to suppress the action of rh i am sorry because there is no where the suppression injection is mentioned here the name of the injection is not mentioned here so i can't provide the perfect name of the name but for the treatment purpose, they will provide a suppression injection to reduce the action of Rh negative gene. This antibiotic to kill the baby which is produced will stop the production of tick. And one main thing, during the antibiotic screening on the result, if you see, if you get the count of 4, 4 IU by ML, if you get, then there is no problem. You can, you can follow, it's a negative sign. If you get above 10, then there is a problem which indicates it's a positive. It's all about management of Rh negative. Hydrated for mole or also known as vascular mole. This is nothing but when an embryo is formed, the embryo starts to degenerate. In the sense, the baby is not developing properly inside. Inside these cells which is present inside the embryo, will start to degenerate in the sense they start to die and start to expand and they start to leak out. This is also considered as a cancerous mole. Here abortion or the removal of this part is very very important. This is done immediately after confirming there is a presence of vascular mole. Sign and symptoms seen in this are abnormal bleeding. This bleeding is not continuously seen in one flow. Ups and downs are seen. For example, if today the female is feeling heavy bleeding, suddenly at the afternoon or the night section, the bleeding will be completely nil. And suddenly after one or two days or next day itself, the bleeding is again high. This is how the up and down bleeding will be continuing. And abdomen pain is constant and it will be increasing gradually day by day when this uh, condition is getting more worse. Vomiting sensation is seen because of Chorionic gonadotropy, breathlessness, tiredness, everything is seen and uh, this condition can lead to severe conditions like preeclampsia, most likely to lead an hypertension conditions, sugar BP will occur, convulsion is the last condition that occurs in this case and the diagnosis of this condition is first because of irregular bleeding and heavy bleeding, we will check the blood count and the type of blood group and uh, you know at this condition the hormonal level everything will be imbalanced there will be ups and downs to make sure there is no any other under related conditions like urinal problems or thyroid problems we do test for that and definitely ultrasound will be performed to detect how big the mole is how to be removed and all and while this you know one thing to remember the first management that is done is soon after detecting the first thing we do is that removal that is emptying the uterus. This emptying the uterus requires some criteria that is the age of the patient at what condition this mole is and how big the mole is. Is patient is ready for this operation or this act. We will see every criteria and then we will perform the act and before performing the act there are actually two types. First of all the mole you know if it is deep inside the uterus then we need to remove it and there are few moles which are almost about to fall there is no need of performing the act like they itself will fall off okay either they are about to expel or we need to insert and expel it we should see that and then after the case will be proceeded the removal of this mole is done in this two way hysterectomy or hysterectomy this two procedure if you see the first one is involving the cutting of uterus while second is involved cutting of the partial part by based on the place and based on the size the 
procedure will be performed. After removing, we will provide chemotherapy, metotherac 2.5 mg. This is given to make sure the HCG level hormone is normal. During the time of pregnancy, during the embryo is developing, the HCG hormone will be more. But in this process, we are removing the embryo. So, the, this level should become normal. All of sudden, it cannot become normal. So, we will provide the medicine. Apart from this, other conditions, based on that conditions, we will provide the medicines. Like, if the patient is very dehydrated, we do give IV fluids. If the patient has lost enough amount of blood, then we will give her blood. And blood transfusion will be performed. Iron tablets will be given. Calcium tablets will be given. Vitamin tablets will be given. Like that, based on this condition, it will be given. But this is the main ma management performed here. Hydraminous or also known as polyhydraminous. This is a condition in which the amniotic fluid inside the uterus or inside the womb is produced more than enough. That is more than 2000 ml. This is polyhydraminous. This can be detected just by observing the uterus size. See, in particular month, the uterus should be only this much. In the in two months, it should be 30 centimeter. In three months, it should be 35 centimeter. Like that, there will be some kind of count. Like in one month, it should increase only two inches like that. But if you see in this case, because of this amniotic fluid, the uterus will be expanded so big. The size of the uterus will be very large. That's the main symptom of this. And the problem with this condition is you will be not able to listen to the fetus heart rate. Because of the distance, you will be not able to listen to its heart rate. If you are not listening, then what's the problem? You will not come to know whether the baby is healthy or not, whether the baby is growing proper or not. There will be lots of problems upcoming with it. If you find this condition within 24 weeks of the pregnancy, that will be considered as acute. If you find at the end of the pregnancy, that is chronic. What causes polyhydraminous? In mother, if they have RH isoimmunization, that is, you know already, mother and baby has different RH. If mother has diabetes, then this condition occurs. If mother has any cardiac or renal disease, then this condition occurs. Next, in fetus. Fetal cause is very simple. Multiple pregnancy, more than one baby, that is twin. Generally, amniotic fluid will be increased. If fetus has any abnormality in it, then also the amniotic fluid will be increased. Few examples for uh, fetal abnormalities are spina bifida, uteropelvic function obstruction, malfunctioning of lungs, Down syndrome, rubella sepsis. These are few examples of fetal abnormality. The final symptoms that is seen in this condition is dyspnea. There will be even a breathing disorder in mother. Mother feels very heavy. Edemus can be seen. Enlargement of abdomen. Mainly if you see there is a swelling, you will know how the skin is there. So since the stomach is very much enlarged, the skin here will be very shiny. There will be large stretch marks. The height of the uterus is large. So the grit of the stomach is also, the grit of the abdomen will also be very more. And the fetal part will not be well defined. These are the signs and symptoms generally seen in this. What are the complications? What are the problems related to this polyhydraminous? If the mother has polyhydraminous, then it can lead to hypertension, premature labor, premature rupture of membrane, respiratory discomfort. This was seen in the mother. Well, the fetus which is present inside the womb, that is intrapartum complications are placenta abrexia, cord prolapse, placenta insufficiency, increased incidence of c-section is seen in this condition. Apart from this, after birth, if you see, because of this polyhydraminous, there is a chance that fetus may have congenital abnormalities. In the sense, by birth itself, there might be some kind of abnormality present in the baby. Diagnosis of this condition involves maternal antibody screening, diabetic screening, TOTS, serology. If everything comes negative and still we have uh, polyhydraminous, it's quite common. Sometimes the cause is not known. And we will start to 
give the treatment for the patient. And the treatment is nothing but amniotic fluid decompression. We remove the excess view of amniotic fluid present in the uterus. And at the time of delivery, we will make sure the delivery is the normal delivery. If there is any complications that is stopping the normal delivery, then we will undergo C-section. This is all about polyhydraminous. There is a small thing to be noted. It's a small topic that is uh, oligohydraminous. I am going to teach you with comparing it with polyhydraminous. Just now we have been completed polyhydraminous. Here the amniotic fluid level will be more than 2000 ml. But if you see polyhydraminous is the condition where the amniotic fluid is less, very less. Less than 200 to 500 ml. When the amniotic fluid in the womb is more, that is polyhydraminous. Whereas if the amniotic fluid in the womb is very less, that is oligohydraminous. In this condition, in polyhydraminous, the uterus size will be very large. But in the oligohydraminous, the uterus size will be very much small. Then in this condition, in polyhydraminous, if you see, we can't hear fetal heart rate. It's because it is faded here. Because of the distance, the fetal heart rate cannot be heard properly. And here in oligohydraminous also, you can't hear fetal heart rate. It's because the fetal is not well active in this condition. Because of no amniotic fluid, the fetal can't move. The fetal is not active. Because of not active, we can't hear fetal heart rate properly. And remaining everything is almost same. For example, the uh, premature rupture of the membrane, fetal congenital abnormalities, fetal growth problem, everything will be same. They both differ in one thing that is treatment. In the treatment, if you see in polyhydraminous, we will try to make sure the delivery is normal or C-section. This is what happens in polyhydraminous. But in oligohydraminous, we will try to undergo termination. We will try to abort because here without amniotic fluid, Without the proper level of amniotic fluid, we can't undergo the pregnancy in a healthy way. So, normally in oligohydraminous, we will see the possibilities of termination. Whereas in polyhydraminous, we will see to make sure the delivery is happening in the normal way. Multiple pregnancy. If there is a formation of more than one fetus at a time, then that is multi -pre multiple pregnancy. If there is a formation of two fetus, that is twins, three indicates triples, four quadruples, five quintuples. Let's see the classifications of twins. In this, we have two main types, that is binovascular twins, univascular twins. In binovascular twins, in the one cycle, we have two ovaries and two sperms get fertilized and two eggs form. Two babies get formed that is binovascular but in univascular one egg will be formed but two sperms get fertile in it and in further development this one ovary get divided into two and two babies formed that is univascular in binovascular the sex of the baby is generally different but in univascular, the sex of the baby having same sex is the common thing seen in the univascular. But in some conditions, the, it might be boy and girl. But generally in univascular, the baby will be either boy or girl. Univascular twins has few terms. Monochorionic, diamniotic monochorionic, diamniotic dichorionic. So here chorionic indicates placenta. Amniotic indicates amniotic sac, the bag surrounding the baby. So, the first condition is monochorionic. Both babies are connected to one placenta. That is monochorionic. And diamniotic monochorionic is nothing but monochorionic. That is one placenta, but they have two baby sacs. 
that is diamniotic monochorionic and next we have diamniotic dichorionic two placenta with two amniotic sac this is the three conditions that is seen in univascular twin if for example at the formation of baby the baby is not separated the egg is not separated they are joined the conjoined twins are known as cymacy twins this is the classifications of twins the cause for the multiple pregnancy can be many the food pattern the environment the lifestyle if they are using any kind of hormonal tablet those things use of drug and alcohol everything can be the cause of multiple pregnancy and sometimes the cause is not known diagnosis is very simple during the pregnancy the routine checkup will be performed in that routine checkup we perform sonography by using sonography we will get to know what is the position of twins and uh, how the twins are what type of twin is present everything we will get to know based on that the treatment will be provided complication of multiple pregnancy in this condition if you see the chance of getting hypertension and other kind of underlying conditions like diabetes mellitus is increased here in the multiple pregnancy the chance of getting hypertension and diabetes mellitus is quite common if there is a chance of getting hypertension then do remember the cardiovascular system is also in danger apart from this because of this hypertension and diabetes mellitus the healing power of the body will get reduced so the postpartum bleeding will be increased the postpartum duration will be increased in this multiple pregnancy stage since there is two babies or more than two babies mother can't provide enough amount of blood to the baby in this condition anemic is quite commonly seen apart from this preterm birth that is before 9 months the birth of the baby may occur and the last thing is it's very important that is when there is two baby is growing in the womb one baby grows very well very healthy whereas other baby doesn't grow so much good because only one baby absorb all the nutrition all the blood supply nutrition everything while other baby lacks in it this condition is known as twin to twin transfusion syndrome this is quite commonly seen in twins baby one baby will be very healthy and well other baby will be very low in health these are the complications of multiple pregnancy these are the questions that may occur for the exam it may come may not come but do practice well do like the video and support me meet you in the next video until then stay tuned bye